In short, the dead load is the self-weight of structural and non-structural elements and has to be considered in every structural design of beams, columns, slabs and walls. So in this video, we'll look at the definition of the dead load, how you calculate the dead load for different elements and the load direction. So let's get straight into it. The dead load represent permanent loads, such as the self-weight of structural and non-structural building materials. The self-weight of a concrete slab, a timber truss roof and flooring are examples of the dead load. The weight is calculated and then apply to the structural member that carries it. Next up, the calculation of the dead load. How the dead load is calculated depends on the structural element that needs to withstand the load. For example, the dead load of a slab is usually calculated as an area load with the unit kilonewton per square meter because the slab itself needs to carry the load and the slab is a 2D static element. On the other hand, the dead load applied on 1D static elements like beams and columns are usually either line or point loads with the unit kilonewton per meter and kilonewton. So let's have a look at how to calculate different dead load types. First off, the area dead load. We calculate the area dead load by multiplying the density of the element with the thickness. So for example, the area dead load of a concrete slab with a density of 2500 kg per cubic meter and a thickness of 20 centimeters is calculated as 2500 kilograms per cubic meter times 0.2 meter equals 500 kilogram per uh, square meter. Now, we engineers don't use kilograms in our calculations anymore, but instead kilonewton. So now we have to transfer the dead load from kilogram per square meter to kilonewton per square meter. So 500 kilogram per square meter are roughly five kilonewton per square meter, which we then apply to the concrete slab. By the way, if you want to learn how to calculate other loads like wind, snow and life load, then you can download my free 33 page long structural design cheat sheet from the description below. In it, you'll find the most important formulas I use as a structural engineer to calculate loads. Okay, after knowing how to calculate the area dead load, let's check out the line dead load. An example where the dead load is calculated as a line load are beams. As an example, we are calculating the dead load of a timber beam. The line dead load of the beam equals the density of the beam times cross section width times cross section height. The line dead load of a wooden glue lamp GL24H beam with a density of 420 kg per cubic meter, a cross section width of 10 cm and a cross section height of 20 cm is calculated as 420 kg per cubic meter times 0.1 meter times 0.2 meter and that equals 8.4 kg per meter. As for the area load, the line load also has to be transferred from kilogram to kilonewton. So 8.4 kg per meter equals 0.08 kilonewton per meter. Let's check out the point dead load. An example where the dead load is calculated as a point load are columns. We do that now for a timber column. The point load is calculated as density of the element times cross section width times cross section height times column length. So the point dead load of a wooden glue lamp column with a density of 420 kg per cubic meter, cross sectional width of 30 centimeters a cross-sectional height of 50 centimeters and a length of three meters is calculated as 420 kilogram per cubic meter times 30 centimeters times 50 centimeters times three meters. And that equals 189 kilograms. Again, translating that into kilonewton gets us 1.89 kilonewton, which we then can apply on top of the column. Now that we know how to calculate the dead load and its different types, we have to take a look at how to apply 
it to structural members. In most cases, the dead load is applied to a horizontal element, like for example a slab, a flat roof or stairs. And in that case, the dead load can simply be applied vertically to the horizontal element. But it gets a bit more tricky when we need to apply the dead load to an inclined structural member, like a rafter roof. The dead load gets applied to inclined structures with the load direction set axis downwards while the distribution follows the inclination of the roof. So in a 3D view it looks like this. We can see that the area dead load is applied on the surface area of the inclined rafter roof. The load direction is the same for 2D sections and line loads. So when we transfer the area load into a line load, the line load can be applied to the rafter with the same direction and distribution. So to summarize, the dead load can be used in three different variants, area, line and point load. And it's calculated by density times dimensions of the element, depending on which load type we calculate. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.